Hey, it's Fifi Dobson, and you're watching Profits of Rock. I am here with the amazing Shelley Pikin. Um, as many of you know, I'm also a, a songwriter, but I'm also a TV researcher and a podcaster, which is why I created this platform to speak to amazing people that I find so cool. And I literally grew up on this woman. This woman, if you've been living under a rock, she's a Grammy-nominated multi-platinum songwriter who is best known for writing your favourite songs, hits, um, such as What a Girl Wants by Christina Aguilera, B Word by Meredith Brooks. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering how you were going to do that. <laughs> I mean, I just had to cut through um, several songs for Britney Spears, Gladys Knight, Aaliyah, Celine Dion, Bonnie Tyler, the name got in excess. She's just behind some of the best songs that I, I've ever heard. And it's just amazing to take this space with you and saying thank you for all of the things that you've contributed to this industry. It's it's an honor. So how are you, how are you doing today, Shelley? Well, I'm doing okay. You know, so far no virus. Yes. So you know, just that alone, I'm okay. I'm in sunny California. Mm -hmm. I put my first T-shirt on of the year. Amazing. It's that warm, so you know I can't complain amazing amazing and like you said we're going through this pandemic it's just been really really hard and as a songwriter as a prolific songwriter with over 30 years in this business yeah how have you found the transition of working and has it been a lot of remote working when you're collaborating now you know i probably am in the minority but i did not do not will not collaborate over zoom I really need to be in the room with my energy and with the energy of whoever I'm working with. And I tried it. I couldn't get past the latency of the back and forth. Um, I always like to sort of connect and go for a walk with somebody or at least, yeah. you know, uh, be able to grab their shoulder, you know, go for a walk with somebody before we write or grab their shoulder when you're writing and you get something good and you're just like, oh no, oh my God, and you jump up and down. So I realized in the beginning of the pandemic that was not going to work for me. And um, I sort of said, that's, that's okay. I'm just going to wait. My husband, who's also a songwriter, he does more music for TV and film stuff, but we got hit up to write a couple of songs for a show. And so we just did it together under the same roof because I just don't know how every, and everybody seemed to do it. In fact, it was quite liberating. You could work with anybody all over the world, but I just never found it. Um, I just never got into it. So I'm going to wait till I could be in the room again which I'm starting to do a little bit more of now. Amazing. Well, I'm sure that's going to be amazing. Can we look out for the name? Do you know, does it have a, a, a release date or a broadcast date? What you're working on? With oh, the, oh, the movie I did with him. It was, um, I think it was on a YouTube. It was called Quarantine. Oh, I love the name. It's about these kids who it was very timely because um, and it was fun. Uh, so I don't think it's going to be on Mark on movie marquees but um that's how I stayed creative I did a couple of things online I don't even know I, I can't even keep track I have the amazing book uh, <laughs> called confessions of a serial song that's me that's you that's the lovely yeah, yeah. I that's love me on a really good day <laughs> and I think that's a flex serial like she has hits y'all and um it's just amazing because yes, it's your memoir, but it's also like a blueprint. It's also like a how-to guide. And I think it's fascinating that you've used your whole life and shown yeah. how these songs came to be. So what was it like writing this? Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I feel like it's spotty with how-to. It really isn't like, here's how to write a song. Once in a while, I would get into that, but it was more about my journey. And uh, I, I feel like I wanted to talk about the, the successes and also the rejection and how that makes you grow and how actually good it is to feel rejection and to have it, it builds character. I mean, I was, I was writing songs and having them on album cuts as records for 10 years before I ever had anything on the radio. 
I mean, a songwriter now couldn't survive on that because they're making digital royalties. I was making physical mechanical copies. So if you had a song that was just an album cut that nobody ever heard on the radio or there wasn't any streaming then, um, and it sold a million copies. If you were the sole writer, you made close to $100,000. That just doesn't exist anymore. So I was able to do that for 10 years before I had a hit. And I just wrote about those sessions and um, it just felt like everybody around me was having all this success except for me. And I wrote about being in the room with different artists and different writers and running into them in elevators and them not knowing who I was. It was just an amazing journey. And yeah. I feel like I'm still on it. You know, it's just the other side of it. And what do you do now? Of course. And I, yeah. I actually, um, I work for one of the, the, well, last year, one of the broadcasters in, on a show um, for a TV network. And I actually spoke to Bonnie Tyler um, and she spoke about her new album and there's a song um, I believe it's stronger than than a man that you wrote. oh yeah with Desmond Child yes who wrote living on a prayer amazing yes and um, she said that that she had an amazing time working with you and that that's one of her favorite songs if not her favorite song on the album oh that's so nice to hear and it's so powerful yeah it's perfect for her it's perfect it's like yeah perfect and it's all about that women women's empowerment and that's the same thing with Meredith Brooks's. Yeah. yeah. Well, the body song was, did you ever hear that, that saying, um, a woman could do whatever a man does, except she could do it in heels. Yes. I love you know, that. that's sort of what the Bonnie was doing. The Bonnie Taylor song was doing, although screw heels, you know, we could wear sneakers now. Yes. We don't have to wear heels to do all that stuff. We're, you know, we don't have to put on a pair of heels to prove we could do it in heels. We could do it in our um in our vans and and yeah Meredith I it's funny I get hit up a lot to write um female empowerment songs because of the b song um with the five letters um and what a girl wants for Meredith for uh Christina but the thing is on the days that I sat down to write those songs I wasn't thinking let's write a female empowerment song. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just something that happened, I guess, because it's naturally in our zeitgeist or it's something I think about. That's the thing, is but that that's not what we were writing. When you sit down to specifically write a female empowerment song, it ain't going to happen. It's just not, or it's going to be really cheesy. Do you have those me- moments where you get writer's block? Because it just seems like it just flows for you. Like in those sessions, like with Meredith, it just seemed like it was just so natural. And well, after you had like some disappointment and you just surprisingly just found yourself writing this amazing song. Yeah, but you're not, you're not, you're talking about that day when it flowed and you're not hearing about the 20 songs I wrote in between the really good ones that were, that didn't work and didn't flow at all. And we all have them. And any writer that pretends they don't is not really telling the truth or they're just like amazingly prolific, but you know, it's like the pictures we post online. My friends will say, you look gorgeous. You age so well. I'm like, yeah, I'm not posting the bad ones. Yeah, And there are plenty. (laughs) Our life is good. good, I'll give you the good angle. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, Meredith and I got in a room one day with with an acoustic guitar on her lap. There was no, like I write about this in my book, there's no beatbox, there's no rhythm, there was no track. Yeah. You know, it was just, here's a line, what do you think of this? And she came up with another one, and then I came up with another one, it was like ping pong. It just reminds me of watching um, Get Back on Disney Plus. Um, oh, thank you. I love that my songwriting reminds you of Get Back. I mean, it does, it does. Like the rapport <laughs> of you and Meredith just reminds me of like Lennon and McCartney and your vibe. Yeah, and vibe. well. It was magic that day. We had fairy dust sprinkled on us for sure that day. Somebody up there was watching over us. It's the perfect song. Like, not just to, like, really, it's my favorite song. And I was, like, five years old. It was huge here in England. I was, like, five or six. And I just remember my mom was like, what is this girl listening to? But she was so, like, she could see how much that that song meant. And I think it's just so enduring. Like, there's so many movies that have used that song. Does it surprise you at how long lasting it 
it has become and how many of your songs have become so long lasting. To be you sure. know, I'm so thankful for that because it's sort of an annuity. It has been in uh, What Women Want. It was in the movie. Um, oh, it was it was just last year in the series um, Little Fires Everywhere. Yeah. Ruby Amonfu sang like this down version. And it's been on so many TV shows, Orange is the New Black. Um, I can't even count them. And every time I think, okay, we're done, then another one comes along. And I think, I think there was something novel about it, Erica. And I think it was very culturally relevant at the time. And now when um, a TV wants to license something that's very reminiscent of 1997 1998 to put people where they were at that time yeah. it's a song that they go to and i'm very thankful because so many songs today there's so many more songwriters than there used to be so many more songs so there's not enough room so even if a song is a hit today it's here today and gone tomorrow and are you going to really hear that your favorite hit of today in 20 years, is it still going to be relevant? Is it still gonna be ubiquitous? So I am ever so grateful um, because that song, What a Girl Wants, I feel like if I had never written anything else, I could probably live on them. Absolutely. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like, it just keeps on going and it keeps on finding a new generation, a new generation. And that era of you, and even Diane Warren and Desmond Child and Andrea Martin, who recently obviously passed. Yes. Power. Yes. She, you, you guys, you've written songs that literally have long lasted long. And what would you say within the 30 years that you've had, 30 plus years, what have been the biggest differences and the changes that you've noticed in the industry? Oh, well, it's in the economy. It's in the ecosystem. It's when songs went digital when music delivery went digital. It's just really bad for songwriters, how we get paid and the streaming services. Some are a little bit better than others, but we have to sort that out. I do a lot of um, volunteer work with Sona, Songwriters of North America. And we have, we are a completely songwriter centric voice and we are allied with a lot of the PROs and the music publishers, but we come from strictly a songwriter point of view and what serves us. And we're making a lot of noise and we're making it very difficult for streaming companies to keep going on as they have. And you might have noticed in the past few weeks what's going on with the with one of the services. And I'm that might not have been our issue, but we're sort of jumping on that wagon because there's a lot of things that are wrong over there. And we're going to hopefully keep that in the spotlight because any way we can try to get the streaming services to treat us better and to treat everybody better, um, the better off songwriters are going to be. It's just really tough out there. Any young songwriter I know that's coming up has to have a, another job as well. I never had to have another job. Once I got my first recording, that's what I quit my job. Wow. But songwriters have to have another job. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a multi-hyphenate millennial. I'm podcasting, but I'm also working in TV right. and People are like, why you wear so many hats? Yeah, but I wish it could be women. Um, and so, of course, I, I totally get what, what you're saying. And absolutely, I think it's time for women. And you've always spoken of, of that. It's time for women and songwriters to be compensated really well. Really well. I, you know, I, for anybody else. It's it's hard. It's not just hard for women to be compensated digitally. It's the same for any songwriter. That's I mean, women might have other issues yeah. in, to get noticed or to get in the room, but we're all having an issue being paged, being paid in a digital marketplace. Right. Yeah, and yeah, it needs to change. It needs to change for all. And, yep. you know, that's how we get talent like yourself. And I know that you are also a mentor to so many young um, or just aspiring songwriters. You also work with She Is The Music, which is Alicia Keys' 
um, songwriting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Women. So how has that been like? It must be so nice to pass on those jewels. Yeah, to, to I, I I enjoy the mentoring. It's paying it forward. Although there's only so much you could do and then still leave room to get your work done. You know, sometimes I felt like I'm doing so much of that, that I'm not getting to finish that lyric or write that song I want to write or take that session. So now I am, um, I'm teaching a class at Murfreesboro uh, down near Nashville. And it's a class of 10 extraordinarily talented kids. They blow me away. They kind of shut me down. Sometimes I just go, I cannot believe how good they are. Okay. And that's, th- you know, three hours a week. Mm-hmm. And I do a lot of preparing for it, which is a lot more hours. But I feel like that is my giving back last year, this year, and for the next few. Um, and it's, I wasn't sure I wanted to do it. I never taught before. Oh. I don't n- really know if I'm teaching from um, um from a manual it's more like a conversation okay. and i'm really enjoying it you know well, i think you'd be the best person to mentor especially because i've read the book and <laughs> it's like a conversational it's a very conversational way that you do put forward like your thank book. you and there's a um there's an audio book available too yes. the audio book was the one that was nominated for a grammy, grammy. and best spoken word yeah 2018 yeah, yeah. you and um Bruce, Stings, Bruce Springsteen. Went Bruce Springsteen, Carrie Fisher, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Ooh, Bernie Sanders. What not a, a bad category. No, it's not. not and it's yeah. very deserving. It's very deserving. Yeah. You know, we, we all know the hits. We know the hits. One of my favorites. And that brings me to your new album, 2.0, etc. Yeah. Well, cross guys, if you haven't heard it, which I'm sure you have, listen to it. You're reimagining all of your the songs that you've written and right and then some one, and then some right um, which is the etc yes etc etc and um almost doesn't count for me that is brandy's one of her best songs if uh, not the best because it 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 kind of deviates from her other other songs it's more indie it's more country it's more pop and it just rounded out the never say never album what was that studio experience like what was it like working with the vocal bible how was well that? I wasn't in the studio with Brandy, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. Those were kind of like the days where the producer just did it. I mean- That was like before remote working. That was like, you guys were- Right, (laughs) right. And I wish they had called to say, Shelly, do you want to come by? She's here. And they probably didn't because I probably would have sucked too much energy out of the room. (laughs) Take a picture. Can I sing with you? I mean- It certainly sounded like you guys were- both in the room so what was it hearing her sing it for the first time sing your words right well I sang on the I sang backup vocals on that track that's me singing some of the so they were all blended together so it sounds like we were in the same room together but we weren't but we did run into each other oh my god it was was like (laughs) when when this is crazy when almost doesn't count was going up the charts it was my birthday and I had taken myself to a, a spa, a health spa in Hollywood. And I was bare ass naked and I walked out of the shower and there was Brandy walking out of the stall next to mine, putting her hair up in a thing. And I thought, is it appropriate? A candid is it moment. appropriate to introduce myself? And I thought, I'm never, I might not ever have another opportunity. So I said, excuse me. Oh, wow. You got to see Kelly something. Bike, and I wrote that song. She was lovely, you know, it was short and sweet, but it was, that's how I met her. We were basically unclothed. Wow. Well, that's just down to the bare essentials. I mean, you guys were amazing on that song and and I know she covered it last year, actually, for I think the census. She she Um, did. And she did such an amazing job and it's such a beautifully written song. It it really is. So funny because right before um, we got on this, I was just playing it on my piano. I'm I was invited to do a couple of songs at Hotel Cafe next month. And I haven't, I'm so under rehearsed. And I said, I'm going to play that song. So I just sat down and I tried to um, remember it. And I did. It's pretty organic. The ones that mean the most, they just come back. 
I was actually playing that album before our chat, <laughs> the 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 2.0, and it's just a beautiful song. And, oh, thank you. you no, know, you're very welcome. And I know, you know, how it was written and, you know, college and, and love, etc. How did how did the words come to, to flow? Yeah, there was a guy I was so in love with at college. And, you know, I'm a journal writer. I'm constantly writing my feelings down and I was always writing all the things he almost did he almost loved me I almost got him to be my boyfriend I almost got him to take me to the formal I almost I almost he almost you know there were so many almost and I kept track of them and then when I was writing with Guy Roche um, who I wrote with a lot um we just got in a room and, you know, we never really, you, we didn't get together in rooms those days and say, okay, we're going to write a song for Kelly Clarkson. We're going to, let's find her high note. Let's find her aesthetic. We just, what I called, had songs. We just said, what are we feeling? Oh, a vibe. And, and I was flipping through my journal and I came to that list of almost, you know, and Guy was playing something on the keyboard and I thought, this feels like a good marriage. I can work these words into that vibe. And we just started singing. We actually put it on the back burner for a while because we didn't know if, if it was R&B or if it was country, if it was pop, do we send it to Bonnie Raitt? Do we, what do we do with this? And we just sort of left it there for a little while and came back to it um, a few months later and took it a little bit more we put a more r&b we called it urban then vocalist on it sent it to craig kalman and he had brandy hear it but then a couple of years later it was recorded by mark wills in nashville you know straight down the road country so it's funny that you heard country in her version because i guess I there was that you. flavor too did you I grew up really? in the country. My mom, you know, my mom's originally from Nigeria, but I think she was in Nashville somewhere in another life. So I grew up listening to Dolly Parton and Shania and wow. McIntyre, and I play a bit of guitar myself. And I, I had a rock radio show back in university, and I always filtered in things that were like a hybrid, and I always played that song. I played it in between Aww. Zeppelin and because I just love the song. It's oh, like, thank you. Oh, all your songs like really, I really thank you amazing you are and you know you speak in the book about how songs come together we've also got your know, amazing um your catalog um but do you have any advice for new songwriters who are looking to have the same opportunities or one day have that opportunity of having these enduring classics who may suffer from writer's block how yeah keep positive how do you advise them to keep going i think well first of all it's so competitive out there that and this is just the honest truth if you have a choice to do something else do something else <laughs> if you've got a fire that shuts you down and says there's nothing else i could do this is what i want to do do it i'd say try not to chase the algorithm go where your heart beats faster, write what you are excited about, because if you're not excited about it, nobody else is going to get excited about it. You know, John Lennon said, tell the truth, make it rhyme. I think I've always been the, the five songs I think that I wrote that were most personal and that I felt that way about were the ones that people resonated that resonated with everybody and and a lot of the other ones were on all these albums and stuff but my five biggest songs were ones I was very like deep and personal about and I think that's where you got to go don't be chasing what you think people want to hear but do you get scared sometimes of going too vulnerable because no you don't? never I love that I love no that. no you can't go too vulnerable you could only go you could only do it in an unpoetic way. You don't want to be pathetic and you don't want to come off as a victim. But if you're honest and raw about your insecurities, or I mean, I think that there are so many people out there that have insecurities and that are vulnerable and they 
they, your vulnerability resonates with them because they feel like they're not alone. Yeah. You see all the social media and you think everybody on social media is so secure and good with themselves and we're not. No. So when somebody sings about I'm not, you just are so grateful that you're not the only one. And I think that we need to do that. We do. I think that's what sets us apart. I think that's what sets everyone apart. I think that's what sets you apart. You know, you've written so many songs that are like the harder kind of rock, kind of pop, like, you know, right? whatever. Um, but you've also written the most tender, beautiful songs, like one of my favorites, Mandy Moore, I Want to Be With You. Oh, yeah. That's kind of fashionably about like love. And is that like the, the essence? Is that easy? I don't want to say easier. But do you find yourself naturally going towards yes. those type of songs? Like, way you know, easier going to that kind of song. Yeah. Way easier. Yeah. Um, I have a, a game just to close up. Thank you so much. Yeah. I have a game. It's kind of like a rapid fire game. So I hope you Uh oh. Okay. Okay. So my first question, Shelly the Queen, is what is your idea of a perfect day? A perfect what? A perfect day. Nothing on my calendar. I like that what are when the- i look at my calendar and it says nothing i go yeah 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 i like it i mean you've worked so hard you can you can do this and what are the three things you believe make the perfect song truth mm-hmm. vulnerability catchy amazing what are the three things that uplift you i like threes that's why I'm always- martinis Ooh, I like that. good friends Love of my family. Beautiful. And what is the most frequently used? Not in that order. Oh. The martini should come third. It, uh, <laughs> see, that's my order, but don't write. <laughs> and what, what would you say is the most frequently used imagery in your text conversations? Oh, oh, I have one. I use it all the time. Okay. I actually call it my favorite emoji. It's the one with the bug eyes. Oh, I love that one. It's the okay. one like this. Yeah, I love because that one. Because so often I feel like, can you believe this is happening in the world? Yeah, that's just a permanent, That's that was 2020 right there. Yep. And then what's your favorite movie and why? Oh, um, Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. You know that movie? Yeah, I know With it. Robbins and Morgan Freeman and the guy's in jail and he's innocent and he digs off. I think it's because he was, he persevered. He just kept digging through that wall, digging through that wall. And one day he climbed through and he was free and he just hung in there. I love it. I love it. um, I would say what rock icon was the, this is a bit of trivia. What's the rock, what rock icon was the founder of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Long-Haired Men? No clue. I'll get Ziggy. (laughs) Ziggy Pop? David Ziggy Marley? David, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Back in the 90s. I didn't realize there was, was actually, oh, I said Ziggy Pop. It's Iggy Pop. I mean, close. See, close. I'm a lefty and I'm just listening to sounds. That's like, you're a genius. You're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I work. Yeah, of course. And and um, Paul McCartney credits which artist with teaching him everything he knows? Oh, gosh. Um... I can give not John him. Lennon. No. Well, I'm sure he admires John Lennon, but oh, oh, the the I don't know. Who the little Richard? Who? Oh, little Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you're in a. a I'll give, I'll give you a scenario. You're you have an idea for a song. Say you're in a cafe or a restaurant. Do you record it into your phone? Do you yes. Into your car, drive home, record it, or do you write it down on a handkerchief? you record it on your phone on a voice memo as soon as you think it okay so you don't yeah once you get to your car it could be gone right i think that's a a really good thing to do and what's the song that you're most proud of writing i'm sure all of them but is there one no i did a song called human on the inside that chrissy hind recorded with the pretenders oh okay and also a very personal song but I'm, I'm most proud of, of writing it because Chrissy Hine doesn't need anybody writing for her. She writes amazing songs. And the idea that she recorded my song, that she decided and chose to do that, 
was a real life changer for me. Amazing. So, yeah, it's a great song. Amazing. Well, she'll thank you for sharing that because she's incredible and that she's was incredible. Amazing. What's been your best recording session and what would you say was your worst? And it could be with another. I'd say probably my best one was with Meredith the day we wrote. Ah. That was just perfect. It really was. Yeah. And she left and we kind of knew something. We did something. We did something good that day. And, and it was going to bring us success in art and success in commerce, which is a really nice combination. Very often you get one or the other. And one of the worst sessions was, I can't even mention their names because you would know them. And it was a song that that did rather well, but I felt that the, um, the writers in that session that day didn't take me very seriously and didn't pay a lot of attention to me or even look me in the eye. I think that they wanted to write me out of the song which they actually tried to do and it didn't work um and it was very it was very sad because i loved the song and it was a beautiful message and not a very um enjoyable experience and i i like to tell songwriters if they have those experiences where they feel that they're not being valued um don't write with people like that again no matter who they are it's not worth it no, it I, brought I, me down. It really bummed me out for a long time. That's terrible. I mean, I'm so sorry. You've yeah. Experienced that. yeah. I've heard that too many times with other songwriters and it's not fair. Songwriters. I never get treated that way. Yeah. That's terrible. Except that time. I've never, I've had bad sessions where we haven't written a good song, but nobody was blaming anybody and we were still friends. You know, nobody ever treated me like that in a session. So... I'm sorry you went through that. That's not, not, Thank not, you. We need to be nice to each other. Yes. Uh, and 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 last, well, I've got a few more. Um, what would you say to your 21 year old to 21 year old Shelly? I would say um, learn guitar as well as you play piano. Right. Get some more tricks happening because. I was pretty fluent on the piano. I can strum guitar. I play a little to accompany myself, but I feel like the more you know how to play an instrument, the more self-sufficient you are and the more you're going to be able to take yourself into different territories without depending on other people. Other people's great. I love to co-write and I love to co-write with tasty musicians and I would never give them up, but I wish I had learned more about being a tastier musician to myself. So I'm not like hating on me for not doing that. But the question is what, what would you have told yourself? I would just get my chops up. Amazing. Well, I'm sure yeah. there is going to be impacted by that piece of advice. I hope but so. They will. And lastly, I would say if you're on a desert island, what three things would you bring with you? Oh, my pillow, good, good. Comfort. my guitar, because it's easier than a keyboard. Yeah. My cat. That's good. I mean, we're, I'm trying to eliminate the obvious, like family members, my, you know, yeah, no. and a bottle of water. <laughs> <It's worth things. laughs> it's salty, but it's the sea. Oh, Shelly, this has been amazing. We, we've Thanks for having me, Erica. You're delightful. Oh, thank you so much. You're just yeah. wonderful and such an inspiration to, to thank everyone. Thank you for having me. Stay I, safe. I will. I will.